as the year progresses. You have some good experience back at the uh, linebacker position. Marty Mohammed and Kenny Jackson returning starters. Quentin Greenlaw played quite a bit last year. Talk about the linebacking core. Well, I think two of them. I think Marty, uh, Marty Mohammed is definitely the leader of the football team, and I think his presence at that position with the experience that he's had over the past year of playing uh, in what we do with a 4-3 defense, I think is going to pay uh, great dividends for us this season. The athleticism of Kenny Jackson, I mean, how good does Kenny want to be? That's up to him. I mean, I really think that he has the ability to truly learn the position and really, really, truly become a great football player. I think the Will linebacker is going to be open for discussion for the first two weeks of camps, and really it's probably going to come down to Johnny Millard and uh, Max Schultz really are the two guys that will really probably battle to start there. But uh, feel good about the linebacking core and what they're going to bring and the year's experience. You know, the one thing that uh, we are changing is, you know, last year we came in and we kept things pretty vanilla. We have added some coverages that we think uh, go along and complement what we've done in the past that we didn't want to overload our players with a year ago. So we're further along as far as our defensive package goes as well. And when you mentioned the secondary, of course, you have to mention Asa Jackson, Great West Freshman Player of the Year two years ago and first team all Great West last year. Talk about your secondary. You know, Ace is another young man that I think that uh, as, as he continues to blossom and continues to improve, he should be a dominant force for us. And uh, you're going to probably see us do some different things with Ace to highlight some of the skills that we think that he gives us in the coverage part of the game, which I think will make us better on defense overall. Uh, so uh, we're real pleased with the progress Ace has made. Obviously, he missed most of the spring with an injury, but he's back 100%, and we are expecting great things from Ace Jackson. And some of the others back there, but John Samudi, Scotty Cordier. Well, no, th you know, the experience that Greg Francis and Scotty Cordier bring to us at the safety position, I mean, that's another huge asset for us on the defensive side of the ball, especially understanding that they've been in the system now for a second year. I think a lot was thrown at them that was different than maybe they had been asked to do in the past, and I thought they responded well at times, but I think their knowledge of what we ex exactly expect out of them now has grown. Uh, tremendously, and we expect both those guys to be great contributors. Bijan Samudi, I think, is another guy that has tremendous talent, and uh, he needs to grow up a little bit. He's going to be in year two now. He's not a freshman any longer, and we're going to need him to be very productive. And again, a young but very competitive cornerback position. And kicking game, you lost your punter, Harlan Prather, but you have two kickers back, and you have a pretty good newcomer in, too. Well, I think that, uh, you know, Chris Pinto, I think if, if we really can uh, allow him just to do one thing, which is really punt and maybe be the backup kicker on away games, uh, I think that's going to enhance his chances of becoming a better punter. Uh, Jake West, we've talked about his talent before. We do think he's had tremendous talent. Unfortunately, in the spring game, he had trouble with the ones that were 15 to 20 yards and did very well with the ones that were 40 yards. But uh, the young man we're bringing in, James Langford, I mean, you're talking about a young guy that kicked a 57-yard field goal in probably the most pressurized kick of his career in, a, in his high school all-star game with no time left on the clock. So he's a tremendous talent. It's going to be interesting to see how much he's done this summer and where he's going to kind of fit in the depth chart. But uh, we are improving in the kicking game, but that's going to be an ongoing task. And finally, the schedule. You opened with two games at home against Humboldt State and Montana on September 4 and 11, and then what could be a killer five-game road trip. Talk about that schedule. Well, I think that, you know, it starts out okay, except for the fact that we wish that uh, we could play Montana here when our students were here. I think that would be a great thing. I know it's wild week, which should help us a little bit, but uh, it'd always be nice to be on the road maybe to start our season at Cal Poly and come back and play as school starts a couple of home games before you get on the road. But we have a lot of challenges in our scheduling uh, here at Cal Poly, and we understand that, and we're willing to accept those challenges. And I'm not going to quote, unquote, say, you know, any place, any time or any of those things, but in reality, we have to accept most of the challenges we're given. So when people say they'll come here, we usually say yes, and when people ask us to go there, we say yes. Unfortunately, we go five difficult weeks in a row on the road where we're going to play a probable ranked team in Texas State, McNeese State, a top 10 team probably, uh, and Fresno State, who I'm sure they're saying with 20 returning starters is going to be a team that needs to be dealt with in the national rankings at the, at the FBS level. And then you go to a really up-and-coming program in uh, Old Dominion and I think the most improved Great West team in Southern Utah. So you add that to Montana, that's six difficult games in a row, and we're going to have to survive that part of the schedule in order to become the team we want to be at the end of the season. Fresno State, October 2 in Fresno. The remaining home games, October 23 against North Dakota, October 30 against St. Francis, November 13 against UC Davis, all at 6 p.m. at Alec G. Stadium. Tim Walsh, thank you, and good luck in 2010. Great, looking forward to it.